Do you have a pet first aid kit for your dog or your cat when they get injured, a small minor injury at home? It's important so that way you don't have to rush off to the vet for something small. Or if you have a pet sitter who comes over all the time, it's handy for you to have that so that they can grab it. Today, we're going to share with you all the things that you should have in your pet first aid kit for your home. And of course, to do that, like normal, we brought in an expert too, actually. And first, we're going to start with Denise Fleck, who is known as the Pet Safety Crusader. And you can find her at thepetsafetycrusader.com. And she specializes in teaching pet first aid and knowing everything there is to know about pet first aid. So we just went to her and asked her, what do we start with? If you don't have anything together yet, or if you do and you just want to make sure it has the right things, here is what Denise recommends you have in your pet first aid kit at your house. The most basic things you need in your pet first aid kit include 3% fresh bubbly hydrogen peroxide, eye wash, only purified water, saline, or even your bottled water if you haven't sipped on it, a digital thermometer, and some sort of lubrication to make it glide, bandaging material, four or two inch gauze squares, gauze roll to wrap it, and of course that flexible wrap that sticks to itself and not to your pet's fur to make a nice compression bandage. You're going to also want to have Benadryl for bee stings and various allergies. I like the um, gel caps that you can prick with a safety pin and just squirt under your pet's tongue. Make sure it's only diphenhydramine, no other added element. A syringe, eyedropper, or turkey baster to deliver liquid medication. Blunt nose scissors, some gloves to protect you from bacteria, as well as styptic powder to stop the bleeding on one of those bloody toenails. You can always use a slice of white bread, cornstarch, or flour if you're in a bind, and you'll probably have one of those at home in your kitchen. And last but not least, your first aid guide, because you just might need a quick reminder before you actually apply a first aid technique. That comes off as quite a few things, but don't worry. If you don't have them, it's pretty easy to just grab a bin, a bag, whatever you want to keep your stuff in and throw, throw it in as you acquire it and build your first aid kit. But now that we know what you should start with, we want to talk about why you should have this. What kind of things could actually happen to your pets at home? And I have a lot of experience with things like cuts and scrapes. <laughs> For one, I have a greyhound and their skin is very easy to cut and scrape. So she's done everything from slice open her side to tearing her her paw here, you know, between her two toes. And so having a first aid kit for all of those minor cuts and scrapes, which this one can be severe, you still want to be able to treat it. Even if it's something that gets to the point where you have to go to the vet, you having the ability to triage before you go is really helpful. And cuts and scrapes are something that, you know, pets are wild. They're running all over. Even in your home, they can get beat up by playing. And those cuts and scrapes can happen anytime. It can be when your dog or cat runs through a thorny bush or when your two dogs are playing bitey face and it escalates. It gets a little bit out of hand. And another reason that I like to have a first aid kit on hand is for when I clip my dog's nails. And the same applies for cats. If you hit that quick, you can be dealing with a bloody mess. And it's not a severe injury, but it is something that you want to try to deal with right away and also prevent your house from being covered in blood. <laughs> I don't recommend that. Yeah. And it's, and it's painful for them too. So you want to be able to get to it as quickly as you can. That's a big reason, right? You're actually trying to help your pets. And another thing that can happen is things like bee stings or bug bites, allergic reaction. My greyhound's been stung by bees and to this day still thinks if something touches her lower back that's small and light, it must be a bee and she freaks out. But dogs and cats, can have allergies to trees and to different things that like humans can. My little one ran through bushes once and whatever was in there made his eyes swell up. So we had to use some eye drops and some Benadryl to get it under control. Just being prepared for all of those things is really important and it makes you feel better about the care you can offer to your pet. One of my dogs loves to try to eat bees out of the sky. He's never been successful, but just in case he ever is, I want to be prepared. We like to call them jalapeno sky raisins. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do also hope he's never successful. Yeah. And another reason, especially in winter months, or if you do like to go on walks on concrete, is dry paw pads. If your cat or your dog, their paw pads start to deteriorate, you want them to keep them moisturized. And so you want to keep an eye on that. But having a first aid kit that has something that can help with that in that will keep them safe. And as Cole mentioned earlier, you know, the goal here is to treat what you can at home but sometimes it does involve still taking them to the vet if something is more severe. But you wanna get them into a situation, get your pet, your dog, your cat into a situation 
where they can be transported to the vet and they can feel safe and you're not, again, dealing with blood everywhere. So that's another good reason to have a first aid kit at home. And though many of these things apply to both cats and dogs, we do know that cats are a little bit different. They have different needs and there are things that they maybe can't have that dogs do. We wanted to make sure we got the proper information around cats. So we reached out to Arden Moore, who is the pet health and safety coach. And she does a lot with cats. So we brought her in here. You can check her out on her site, which is Pet First Aid For You. And it's the number four and the letter U, Pet First Aid For You. But she's going to come in and share with you cat specific needs when it comes to a first aid kit so that you can ensure to keep your pets when you are handling an injured cat and you're getting your pet first aid kit, get everything ready before you try to get the cat. You know that cats are different than dogs, so they're more sensitive to certain kinds of medications. They have a flexible spine, which makes it trickier. One of the most essential things for a cat first aid is a thick bath towel, because when a cat is injured and they have a flexible spine, you're able to safely grab them and take them and be able to medicate them. The other thing is, even though it's not a safety kit, we recommend that you have top loading carriers so that you can load an injured cat easily into the top. Here we go with Pet Safety Cat Casey. And leave the towel in there with the cat because it has their smell, gives them a hidey hole, and it gives you a little bit of a protective barrier. And the other thing that may surprise people is if you've got an injured cat in your house, start closing the doors to other rooms first, take your laundry basket, pop it over them, put a cardboard underneath, and you have a temporary makeshift carrier. So those are some things that may surprise people about first aid for cats. So now everyone who has a cat can be more prepared to have the proper things in your pet first aid kit because it's it's just important to make sure you're thinking about your your pet, your cat, your dog. And in these discussions that we had, it the idea of is hydrogen peroxide good or bad for dogs and cats came up. So of course, we went back to Denise and Arden to get their take to find out if hydrogen peroxide is safe for dogs and or cats, and if so, how can we use it? The main purpose in our dog first aid kit is to induce vomiting. It has to be 3% peroxide, fresh, bubbly, and within its expiration date or it won't do the job. It also can never have gotten too hot. But before you induce vomiting, check with your vet or poison control to make sure that is the appropriate course of action. We would administer a tablespoon for every 10 to 15 pounds through that syringe, eyedropper, or turkey baster. And within 30 seconds to five minutes, it typically works and the dog empties his stomach contents. There can be some soreness, but this is our best at home remedy for inducing vomiting in dogs. I'm, I'm so glad that you're bringing this up. And so is pet safety cat Casey. Do not, do not, do not ever, ever use hydrogen peroxide on your cat externally to clean a wound. You will damage healthy skin tissue. People think that bubbling action means things are going well. Their physiology is different than ours. Things are not going well. The only rare exception for using hydrogen peroxide on a cat is if they got into something toxic and they're not vomiting and you can give it in orally with veterinary guidance. I'm glad that we finally have the facts about hydrogen peroxide. So keep that in mind if you have a cat or a dog and you need to perform any first aid. But now that we have all our supplies and our equipment, and we know what we should put in a first aid kit, there are a few things that you might not think about that are not so much supplies, but are information. These are important not only for you to have handy just so they're there and ready to go, but also, like we mentioned in the beginning, for a pet sitter or someone staying with your pets when you're not around. And that is vet records showing your pets are up to date on their vaccinations and any issues they may have. For instance, I have a dog who has Addison's disease. That's important for people to know. So vet records and the number to your vet, just in case. Yeah, and if you don't have that number memorized, it's great to have it actually on a physical piece of paper and you can put it in your phone as well. And then in addition to your regular vet, you also want to think about emergency vets. If you're 
going to be somewhere special or if maybe something happens in off hours, you want to know who you can contact right away and not have to Google it or look it up on the internet. And on top of that, poison control. If your dog or your cat gets into something that they shouldn't, then having that number at your disposal right away can save you some of those very valuable seconds for if your dog or your cat is experiencing poisoning. Overall, we hope you took away what you can put in your kit, why you need the kit, and a few extra special things like vet records that are just super helpful to have handy in your kit. And if you learned something, we would love to know what it is. So please comment below and tell us what you learned. Do you have something else you put in your kit that you want to share with us? Tell us that too. We want to hear it all. And if you love videos just like this one that can help you care better for the pets that you love, whether they're dogs, cats, or guinea pigs, be sure to subscribe to our channel so our latest videos show up in your inbox.